Good evening, you lot, or morning, whatever. I've got a little bit of a, just want to talk about engines, nitro engines, briefly with you lot. Let's try and expel some of the myths, some of the misunderstandings. A lot of these apply to general engines, not necessarily just nitro engines, but I hear things now and again, either in videos or comments or just in real life, you know, talking to people or anything like that. And, you know, just... Well, it's just things that are are wrong, basically. But everything's open for discussion, so please comment if you have anything to add or you disagree with what I'm going to say. So, one of the things that I hear quite often, which is wrong, is that if an engine is ticking over, or as some people say in some different countries, idling, um, it's going to get hot. Now, this... I had a car on the bench ticking over there for a couple of minutes and some people say that, some people say that, that it gets too hot there you know it's going to overheat um, if you if you start your car up you start your nitro car up and you leave it ticking over to warm up which is the point um, a lot of people they don't they start them up and then they want they need to get going so they rush around getting all their transmitter and everything and they need to get going because they think it's going to overheat if it's sitting there ticking over or idling it's completely wrong now when an engine yeah this is an engine without the head this is not the head that goes on this engine um it's just a demonstration or head here's a complete engine now when an engine is sitting at low rpms the friction is going to be less because it's doing less RPMs. That piston is only going up and down a lot slower. And in the case of a nitro engine, I think they tick over at something like 4,000 RPM. I probably got that a bit wrong, but they tick over very well, high in retrospect to engines. I mean, 4,000 RPM is a lot to an, a bigger engine, but to this, it's nothing. So... There's less friction because heat in the engine comes from friction and it also comes from the combustion, the explosion of the fuel and air mixture. So that's going to be less as well because there's less of it going in. So it's a cooler time, you know, the engine is just sitting there, it's nice and cool, it's not building up a lot of heat. The heat sink or the head hasn't got to have as much airflow over it in order to keep it cool although it still needs some which brings me on to my next part of that there will become a time when sitting ticking over is going to create a condition where it will start to get too hot and that is if it's ticking over there you know it's sitting there it may be a hot day there may be no wind you might have your shell on there's no airflow around the head or the heat sink as it's also known as, but mainly as a head. The whole point of it is to have air flowing through these fins here. These are called fins. Air is supposed to flow through them and blow away the heat, basically, <laughs> and exchange it with cold, coldness, because the air going through would be colder than the engine, colder than this heat. That is designed so the heat from the block with the main, you know, the, the actual engine itself rises up into this and then dissipates outwards. And as I say, air will blow around it, blowing the heat away, and that's how the engine stays cool. It's called an air cooled engine for obvious reasons. So, if there is very little airflow going around this head, of course it's going to start to get hot but that's where you know you just need to use your bloody common sense I mean a lot of nitro the hobby of nitro is all about common sense you get these idiots with the temperature guns checking temperatures every 10 seconds and things like that if that's the way you want to do your hobby that's why you want to do it but a lot of it is just common sense you know it'll be fine sitting there ticking over for 10 minutes if it's a breezy day It'll take over for half an hour if it's a breezy day and there's wind going through that heat sink or that head as I should call it. Some people call it heat sinks, some people call them heads. They are effectively a heat sink because they sink away the heat. But in proper terms they will be called a head. So, where do we go next? Yes, that's what I was going to say as well. 
Now, a lot of people, usually the people who think ticking over is going to cause it to go overheat. On the other side of that, the one those of those people who think that they've got to keep it flat out all the time, they've got to be going around the field all the time because that's going to keep it cool. <laughs> because yeah, there's going to be loads of air going through this head, loads of air going through those fins, but that engine is going to be working flat out. Some cases, you know, I don't know what one this would run at. This would probably run flat out about 33,000 RPM, maybe 40,000 mat now, 35,000, something like that. Um, in the case of race engines, you know, Novas, uh, Reds, any racing engine, they go to about 44, 45,000, so maybe more than that. Um, but just ordinary engines that you'd find in your savages and your you know your ordinary cars for just hobby purposes yeah about 33k something like that that's going to generate a lot of heat so they actually get hotter as they're flat out you know and i know there's going to be a lot of airflow but you'll find that if you just leave your do an experiment do it yourself i'm, I'm urging you now those of you that are them them geeky people that have temperature guns do an experiment and tell me the results and i know what the results will be because i've done it in the past from my own knowledge i've experimented with it and i know for a fact what the results will be but the results will be that when it's sitting there ticking over for two three four five minutes the temperature will be low you know it will be low and you'll better put your hand around that heat sink and it won't burn your hands because it'll be it'll be that cold once you've been <coughs> Up and down the road a few times or round in a circle in a field and then you pull up you take that temperature immediately as soon as you pull up that temperature is going to be a lot more than it was when it was ticking over for five minutes i can guarantee you that do the experiment put the results in the comments to this video and we'll see whose variations we get but i can i'm willing to I'm not going to put money on it, but I'm willing to guarantee that the temperatures will be higher after being flat out around the field for four or five laps or up and down the road six or seven times flat out than they will be if they was just ticking over. So something else which is often, uh, people often say, but to me, in my experience, you know, it's wrong as well because, I mean, everybody knows that the leaner an engine is yeah the less fuel more air it's going to run hotter that's just how engines work the richer an engine the colder it will run okay that is the facts but it seems to be i've just i don't know i just i've seen a lot of people saying that the engine's too rich, it's going to overheat quick, we need to tune it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I heard someone a few weeks ago, and they said, they were panicking, they said, it's too rich, it's too rich, it's too, because the engine was rich, this person, this other person's engine was, was rich, I don't know what the deal was, whether it was new and he was running it in, I don't know, but it was rich. A lot of smoke, very sluggish. You could hear it as well. This other person's going, it's too rich, it's going to overheat. It's going to overheat. You need to tune it. Tune it, he's going, tune it. It's going to overheat. And I'm just like, you are a cop. What is the point in overreacting like that? But if it's too hot, it's not going to overheat. It's going to run too cold, if anything. The, hot, the, the lean of the engine, the hotter it run. That's why, if you've ever noticed with real cars well i know this because when i was a teenager i loved modifying my cars and you know you get maps or when you have a car breaker, you do your tune in you get a four branch manifold you put another air filter on it loads of airflow you know and it'll rev higher it'll be more power the more power you make the more heat you make that is the rule more power equals more heat so you need to get better cooling now i i, I all my cars when i was younger they used to overheat and then I, you, I'd do all this stuff, I'd get remap or I'd get the carburetor tuned, do all this manifolds and exhausts and stuff for more flowage, then, then, then they'd run hot 
And I'd be like, why is it overheating? That's how I learned all this stuff, because of experience. So now I have to get bigger radiators, you know, to, to compensate for that extra heat. More power equals more heat. And a leaner mixture equals more power. So by tuning the engine, you're leaning the mixture, so you're getting less nitro and more air coming in. So that means it will create more power. But that means you're getting more heat, more friction, the, the burn of the nitro in the combustion chamber is going to be hotter because there's more air and less fuel, so that will be hotter. The, the whole engine will just run hotter on a, with a, a good tune on it. Um, it's not going to be hot from being rich. On the con contrary, on the contrary, <laughs> I can't speak. On the other hand, there is some situations where more fuel does equal more heat. Um, but we're talking extreme and we're not talking nitro engines to my knowledge anyway. But you know you get them tractor pulling, tractor pulls, you know, like the um, big tractors or, or tractor units like the big lorries. Uh, the big tractor units, they've got massive engines in them and they roll loads of coal, you know, loads of black smoke. Those are massively rich. They literally, I don't know what injectors they use or whatever, but they pour that diesel in them engines. That's, on the other hand, there's so much diesel going in those engines um, where there's just so much fire going on in them combustion chambers. They they do get hot. No, they, they, that, they'll get massively hot. Um, but general rule of thumb is the more fuel, the richer the engine, the colder it'll run. That's the general rule of thumb that we need to think about anyway, unless you're going extreme, like I just explained. Something else which I hear quite often, which is wrong, completely wrong, is if you've got no exhaust, or you've got an exhaust leak, you'll lose compression. Well, that's wrong. I mean, how can you lose compression if you haven't got an exhaust because compression happens which is why I have this engine here compression happens I haven't got a button that fits this either does this button fit on there? well it doesn't fit but imagine it does fit compression happens between the piston at almost TGC almost top dead center and the button obviously there'll be a glow plug inside there now the compression is between them it's inside this little indent here where the piston doesn't quite go to the top that is where the combustion happens that's where the fire that's where the nitro ignites and the air burns with it it has nothing to do whatsoever with the exhaust because it's blocked off because if it wasn't blocked off well, you'd escape, wouldn't it, before it's expanded, before it's exploded, sorry. And then when it explodes, it pushes the piston down. And in a minute, we should see. There we go. Pushes the piston down, which then forces the gas, the fumes, the burnt nitro and air out the exhaust. So having an exhaust, or even having an exhaust leak, won't affect your compression ratio. It just won't. It's got nothing to do with it whatsoever. The compression is in the piston. On top of the piston, sorry. And when the piston is up, the compression is happening. And with the combustion as well, the exhaust is blocked off. So having no exhaust has nothing to do with compression. So anyone who says you've got an exhaust leak, you're going to be losing compression. Rubbish. Absolute bollocks. Um, in fact, this engine, any engine, will run with no exhaust. It'll run... Well, it won't run fine, but it'll run. Um, you do need an exhaust for certain reasons, a little bit of back pressure, things like that are important for some engines. Some engines like more back pressure than other engines. Two-stroke engines need a um, expansion chamber, things like that, but we'll go into that. That's not to do with nitro. We're talking mainly about nitro. So, yeah, having no exhaust means nothing. Obviously, a nitro engine won't run very long without an exhaust because it needs the exhaust to have its little bit of pipe on it. It needs the exhaust because that the fumes that come out of that go through there and push the nitro into the engine because the engine is the, the fuel pump. So it does need an exhaust, but 
as far as compression goes that is wrong okay you do, if, if you, you can you can test your compression on your engine with no exhaust on it you haven't got to worry about putting an exhaust on it and then worrying about compression just you haven't simple as that right my battery is going to run out on my camera I've got a few more things that I wanted to talk about, but I'm going to do them in another video now because I say the battery's going to run out, so I've got to go and charge it up. So I'll catch you lot on the next one. If you disagree or you've got anything to add to anything I've said, put it in the comments because people who are watching this may read the comments and then they can learn from there. And uh, as I say, everything I say and talk about in these videos is up for discussion all right there is no right and wrongs everyone has their own ways everybody's different everyone has varying levels of experience as well you know so we can all work together to just help other people learn and do all that kind of stuff so remember to love life treat everybody equally and i'll see you lot on the next one all the best you lot